if I apply this, for example, four, and I said that I have f of x is equal to one over x to the three, I can rewrite that as f of x is equal to x to the negative three using my negative powers or negative exponents rules. That means that when I take f prime at x, then my coefficient is going to become negative three x, and when I take negative three minus one, that's gonna to be to the power of negative four, or I can write this as negative three over x to the four. I can do the same thing with my radical for the next one. If I said that f of x is the square root of x, then using my exponent laws, f of x is gonna equal x to the power of one half, remembering that the index of my radical becomes the denominator of my exponent. And then I'm going to use the same principle. I'm gonna say that f prime at x is going to equal one half x to the one half minus one is negative one half, which would be the same as one over two x to the positive one half, which is also the same as one over two and the square root of x. If I'm using the constant multiple rule, where if g of x is equal to c times f of x, where c is a constant, then g prime of x has to equal c at f prime of x, or sorry, c times f prime of x. So, if g prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of g of x plus h minus g of x over h, then that means that the limit as h approaches zero would be c times f of x plus h minus c times f of x all over h. Well, I can pull out the common factor of c, which means that the limit as h approaches zero, I'm gonna pull out that c and multiply it by all of this, and that's going to give me f of x plus h minus f of x, all over h, which is going to give me c and f prime of x. For example five, if f of x is equal to negative six pi times x to the power of four, then I have my constant is negative six pi and x to the power of four is my x of n which means using the comb or sorry, combination of the last two rules, f prime of x is going to give me the coefficient, negative six pi, and then when I take the differentiation of x to the power four, using the power rule, I have four times x to the power of three. And then I can combine all this, f prime at x is equal to negative 24 pi 
and x to the power of 3. I can do the same thing for b. When I'm doing the differentiation, I have my coefficient and I have my power. So y prime is equal to the coefficient 4 multiplied by 7 over 3 x to the 7 over 3 minus 1, which is going to equal 28 over 3 x and then 7 over 3 minus 1 or minus 3 over 3 is to the 4 over 3. For example 6, at what points on the hyperbola xy is equal to 12 is the tangent parallel to the line 3x plus y equals 0. Well, here we have a rational function. What is that rational function? x times y is equal to 12 is y is equal to 12 over x. The tangent line is our derivative is equal to the slope of the tangent Parallel means same slope. And if I get 3x plus y is equal to 0, then I have y is equal to negative 3x. And we can see that there is our slope, the coefficient of x, negative 3. So for the first part, I'm going to do the slope of the derivative. So if y is equal to 12 over x, then y is equal to 12 x to the negative 1. y prime is equal to 12 times negative 1 x to the negative 2 or y prime is equal to negative 12 x to the negative 2 which is in fact my slope. I know from what we pulled here because it is parallel the slope is negative 3. So I'm going to implement that slope. I know that negative 12, sorry, I'm going to do this a little darker. Negative 12 over x squared, which is my slope from here, is parallel. So it is negative 3, which means that negative 12 is equal to negative 3 x squared, when I get it out of the denominator, divide both sides by negative 3, and I get 4 is equal to x squared. And when I square root to solve what x is, x is going to be the positive or negative square root of 4, which is positive or negative 2. Because I have two possibilities here, then I'm going to use both of them. I have one possibility where x is equal to negative 2, and there's a possibility where x is equal to positive 2. 
if my function was y is equal to 12 over x, then I can say that y is equal to 12 over negative 2, which is negative 6. And for the second one, if y is equal to 12 over positive 2, then that's going to equal positive 6. Which means, when does this occur? At the points of negative 2 and 6, and at the point of 2 and 6. And that's it for this lesson.